Hello and blessings from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I just want to bring a teaching here today on a particular topic. There has been this false doctrine that has crept into the church, you know, crept in through Christendom that I've been seeing a lot on YouTube, circulating on YouTube, YouTube videos, all right? And it's about how witches and war how witches and warlocks can steal a person's star. All right. Sometimes I I I um man, this stuff sometimes it's amusing, you know, but nevertheless, there's this doctrine that's going on how witches and warlocks, you know, they work their witchcraft, magic, whatever, and how they can steal a person's star. All right. And what happens when they steal person's star right they're basically stealing their destiny and they're getting the destiny so basically the, the destiny that that person has according to god's will and purpose has been stolen and the person who stole it has their destiny right so you know you're supposed to be great you have a destiny you're supposed to be great according to your star you're supposed to be great Right. So now when they perform their witchcraft, they steal it from you. And now you're basically um, limited, embargo, in prison. Nothing's nothing's working out for you. But yet now they're great. So in essence, they stole your destiny. They stole your star. All right. So I'm going to address I'm going to I'm going to really address all this. And I need to I need you all to pay attention because. First of all, that's falsehood. All right. And this is why I always been saying a lot of people, man, a lot of Christians, I should say. All right. Because the people of this world, they're, they're ignorant. I'm not even speaking about them. But a lot of Christians, they give the devil too much credit. All right. They really overestimate him. All right. And because they don't know their God. All right. Pastors included, so-called prophets included. All right. Many give the devil credit. Talk about him a lot. You know, what he what he can't do, what he's gonna do, this and that. And it, it creates this fear, a sphere of the devil, what the devil can do to you rather than having a fear of God. A lot of Christians overestimate the devil and at the same time underestimate God. And it's because they don't know their God. That's why they don't know their God. Many don't spend time in praying, many don't spend time in fasting incorporate praying and fasting in their life, all right? Many are living in disobedience, and that's why the devil has a lot of power over them. So I'm going to get into all of this, and we're going to understand and learn specific conditions, all right, that must manifest. But this whole star-stealing stuff, this is falsehood. This is false. I'm going to get into all of this. The devil is a counterfeit and he's a liar, okay? There's a trick behind all this and we're going to understand it, all right? We're going to understand the conditions, okay? All right, first of all, I'm going to explain something, all right? In the occult, you know, you talk about a star and this is their definition, what a person's star is, basically. It's a person's destiny, right? With God's blessing incorporated within their destiny, the best what they're supposed to get, what they're supposed to have in this life. That's what it is. A person's destiny with God's blessings incorporated in it. All right? So you have a specific destiny. You're supposed to obtain these blessings, these abundant blessings. So you live your best life, all right? To glorify God. And they teach witches, warlocks, um, they're capable, they're capable of working um, witchcraft, whatever, where the devil can come and steal your star. So now the destiny and purpose you're supposed to have, all right, you don't have no more. You're now in, in, a, in, a, in a spiritual embargo. You're now in a spiritual prison where you're now limited. You're now lacking. Nothing is going well for you. No doorways, nothing, nothing, all right? And now the witches and the warlock that perform this witchcraft, that perform these incantations, they're going to have those blessings that you're supposed to have now. All right, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get into this now, the biblical definition, all right? Because nowhere in the Bible does it tell us 
that a person's star is their destiny with God's blessings incorporated. No, nowhere in the Bible does it tell us that. That's some witchcraft, um, the occultism definition. But nowhere in the Bible does it tell us that. Tells that, all right? These are some last days heretical teachings that have crept into the church, bringing occultism in the church. All right? And now people are, are in YouTube all circulating with videos saying how to get your star back. How to get your star back. Prayers to how to get your star back. Your star was never stolen. What does the Bible say what a star is? And we're going to look into that. First things first, what is a star according to the Bible? Number one, star in the Bible represents Jesus Christ. Let us all go to Numbers chapter 24. All right, follow, follow along with me now. Numbers chapter 24, and we're going to read verse 17. This is um, a prophecy that Balaam uttered, all right? It's a prophecy about Jesus. Listen, Numbers 24, verse 17. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of tumult. All right? This is, this is a prophecy of Jesus Christ. A star shall come out of Jacob. All right? Let's also read Revelation, Revelation 22, verse 16. What does it call Jesus in Revelation? All right? I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. All right? Number one, a star, according to the Bible, represents Jesus Christ. All right? So if your star is stolen, that means the devil stole Jesus Christ from you. What? No. No, 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 no. That makes sense. That can't happen. All right. You reject those teachings. This is why we have to go back to Bible so we can understand what the Bible's definition of a star is. Nobody has a star that represents a destiny. No. Number one, the Bible dictates a star being Jesus Christ. All right. So remember that. Number two, let's see what else it says. What else it says? Stars represents servants of God. All right. How do we know this? Let's go to the book of Daniel. All right. So Daniel chapter 12, we're going to read from um, verses, all right, verses three, all right? Matthew, let's start at verses two. All right, now listen. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. All right? Those who turn many to righteousness. Why? How? how? By the preaching of the gospel, preaching of the word of God. Call people to repentance, all right? Laborers in the vineyard, servants in the vineyard that the Lord sends to preach the word of God to people, to turn them from iniquity, from sin, to righteousness. They will, they will be like the stars of heaven. The Bible describes them as like the stars forever and ever. All right? So basically, somebody stole your star. Somebody basically stole your pastor. The devil stole your, 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 your prophet, your apostle. All right? Whoever preached a word to your teacher. All right? No, that can't happen. You see how ridiculous this sounds when we get knowledge, when we get understanding what the Bible says and stop listening to this witchcraft, foolishness, these, this foolish false doctrine, just perpetuating YouTube, Christendom. Man, I, when I learned, when I learned this, this type of teaching going around, it just didn't sit well with me. It just didn't sit well with me because, as I said, many people think God is weak and devil strong. The devil, devil, devil can't steal your star, man. Listen, at the end of this, I'm, I'm going to get into what's, I'm going to tell you what's going on. All right. But I want to get through this first so we can understand what a star is according to the Bible definition. Let's go to Job. All right. Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38. This describes stars, right, as angels. Just turn there real quick. Job. 38. All right. And we're going to read from verses four. And then we're going to go six through seven. All right. 
Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. So God is speaking to Job now. Now let's go to verses six through seven. To what were its foundations fastened or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. See that? All right. So about the angel angelic hosts. All right. They were rejoicing when God um, created everything. All right. The morning stars, they sang together. All right. And all the sons of God shouted for joy. Those are the angels. Okay. All right. And also in Revelation, there's um there's a scripture that talks about, matter of fact, let's go there. Revelation 9. Let's look at this. Verses one through two, it says, then the fifth angel sounded and listen, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. I'm going to stop right there. A key was given to this, this star. This star is an angel. All right. How do we know? If you actually compare that to Revelations 20 verses one, it talks about the angel coming down from heaven who has a key to the bottomless pit. And he put Satan in there and shut Satan up and sealed him. All right. This could be that same angel who has that key to the bottomless pit. A star in Revelation in the Bible also represents an angel. All right. So we want to remember that. So if, this, if, if Satan comes steal stars, I guess he can steal angels, too, from God. No, that can't happen. No. The angels that, the angels that he took aligned with him to rebel against God, a third of the angels, and they got cast on heaven. That's it. He's not getting no more angels. That's it. All right. Finally. A star can represent false teachers, all right? But these are wandering stars, all right? Black stars, all right? Let's go to Jude. Jude chapter 1, verses 13, all right? And it talks about, let's, um, let's start at verse 12. These are spots in your love feasts, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water. All right. Clouds about water. They, they're not filled with the spirit of God. They're not carried about by the wind. They're just carried about by um, demonic forces, spirits, earthly spirits. All right. Demonic forces, principalities, powers, whatever. That's what they're driven by. They're not driven by the Holy Spirit. You know, where Jesus said the wind blows where it, where it listens, where it wishes. They're not, they're not, not that wind. They're not cared about by the Holy Spirit. They're cared about by the demonic forces, all right? Because they're clouds without water. They don't have the living water in them, okay? So it says, there are clouds without water, cared about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit. They don't bear fruit of the Holy Spirit. They have no fruit. They don't have the character that, um, that lines up with Jesus Christ. They don't have his character, okay? They don't reflect him. Twice dead. Pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame. Listen, wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Wandering stars. All right. So a star also described as a false teacher. You know, so basically stars are, are people or angelic beings. All right. Stars, Jesus Christ. All right. Servants of God. Um, angels, you know, false, false, false teachers, false servants. All right, that's what we have to we have to look at. And remember too, in Revelation, in the beginning of Revelation, it talks about the seven stars of the seven churches, the seven angels, the seven churches that are in Jesus, um, his right hand. Right. Now, the term angel, it means messenger. So. These are not necessarily angelic beings of the seven churches, but these are. Um, can be the overseers, the pastors of them, or the bishops of those seven churches, the servants of God. All right, that's lead, that's leading those seven churches. That's um, guiding them, that's shepherding them. So we have, to, we have to look at it that way, which would also tie into stars being the servants of God. So my point is, according to biblical definition, a star is not anything to do with your destiny. That incorporates God's blessings within that destiny. That's not what a star is. That's not what it is at all. Not according to the Bible. We have to stick to the Bible. A lot of these teachings are putting Christians in fear. All right. Many Christians, they fear these witches. They fear warlocks. Fear obia. They fear witchcraft. All right. Fear omens. Divination. You name it. All right. They put them in fear. And fear is a bondage. 
We're not called to, to, to walk in fear. We haven't been given the spirit of fear, but power of in a sound mind. If we believe that scripture that says, greater is he that is in us than he that's in this world, why are you fearing the devil and what he can do? No, God didn't call us to that. All right. So regards to our destinies now, let's look what, what in regards to our destiny. All right. Because there's always conditions, right? There's always conditions. Someone can steal your destiny. No. No one can steal your destiny. All right. No one can steal your destiny. However, you yourself can sabotage things. How? By going out of alignment with God's will for your life. I've always said this, right? This is how the enemy is so crafty. Before I get into that, I want to look at a few stories that a lot of these teachers, they try to use to say somebody steals somebody's destiny. First off, let's go to Genesis 27. This is a story about Jacob and Esau, all right? Man, oh man, Jacob and Esau, all right? Let's, Genesis 27, let's start at verse 27. So make a long story short. Isaac is about to die, all right? And it says that he can't, in his old age, he can't see well. And now he's about to bless his his son, his eldest son, who is Esau. He's the firstborn, okay? He's about to give him the, a blessing. So he tells Esau, you know, go get me some game, some deer, and make him some food, excuse me, um, to give him something to eat, right? So he goes his way. Now, Rebecca, right, the, the mother, tells Jacob, you know, to deceive his father, all right, to pretend he's Esau so he can get the blessing, all right? So he carries out and Isaac blesses him. Now listen, we're going to start at verses 27 right now, all right? We're going to read to verses, no, sorry, we're going to start at verses, um, yes, 27, we're going to read to 29, all right? And he came there and kissed him and he smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him and said, so this is Isaac now blessing Jacob. Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed, all right? Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine, all right? Let peoples serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren. Listen to that. And let your mother's sons bow down to you. Listen to that. Curse be everyone who curses you and blessed be those who bless you. All right. Now, once Esau came and he realized that uh, Jacob had, quote unquote, stole his, his blessing, you know, he was mad and he wanted his father to bless him. If there's any blessings left for him. All right. And now this is what his father basically um, speaks over him now. Right, I'm going to start at verse 38. I'm going to read to verses 40. All right. So listen. And Esau said to his father, have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me, me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. By your sword you shall live and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass when you become restless that you shall break his yoke from off your neck. Pay attention to that, that part. You shall serve your brother, verses 40. All right, so we have to now understand, right? We have, to, uh, we have to ask ourselves, all right? Somebody can steal your destiny, all right? Something that God has purpose for you because God has all knowledge. He has foreknowledge, right? And he has a purpose for you, all right? So if God has a purpose for you that's laid out, and someone can actually come, which warlock sending demons come and steal that destiny from you. And they receive that destiny, right? Wouldn't that mean that God himself, right, was his foreknowledge was incorrect? Because according to his foreknowledge, he had a specific destiny that you were supposed to have. Right? And but now somebody can come and steal that. Now somebody has it, which God, according to his foreknowledge, that destiny never belonged to that person. That means he 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 never knew that was going to happen. Then that's a surprise to him. You see how ridiculous this sounds. 
All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something. This is what I wanted you to focus on verse 40, where it says, By your soul you shall live and you shall serve your brother. Now we're gonna see something according to the foreknowledge of God, right? I'm trying to show you that what God has declared, so it shall be. His word doesn't return void. Let us now go back now two chapters to Genesis 25. Now, let's let's look at something real quick. So I need us all to pay attention to this. Remember, I wanted you to pay attention to verse 40. So now let's look at something. Genesis 25, let's start at verses 22. All right. I'm going to read from 22 to 23. All right. And it says, but the children, this is Rebecca now. She's pregnant with twins. All right. But the children, well, two children, yeah, um, twins. But the children struggled together within her. And she said, if all is well, why am I like this? She's wondering what's going on. There's a struggle within her. So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, listen, two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. The older shall serve the younger. Who was the older one? The one that came out first, the firstborn. His name was Esau. And who's going to serve? The younger. Who's the younger? The one that came out second, Jacob. What was the um, quote unquote blessing or curse, or whatever, that Isaac spoke to Esau? You shall serve your brother. What did he speak to Jacob? Let your brother serve you and your mother's sons serve you. God already declared this two chapters ago. It was according to his foreknowledge. He already foresaw that. Foresaw that. that blessing Jacob was supposed to get because God's word. He may have done it in a crafty manner. Yes, it's true. He did in a crafty manner. What I'm trying to tell you is the purpose and the, the destiny of, of the younger, sorry, of the older, serving the younger was already declared from the days of eternity, was already declared according to God's word, according to his foreknowledge. There was nobody stealing anything. No. Jacob wasn't supposed to serve Esau, and then somehow um, Jacob stole that destiny. Now Esau serving Jacob. No, falsehood. It was supposed to happen that way, according to the foreknowledge of God. This is why he declared that in Rebecca's, about to Rebecca before they were even born. You see, we, we have to get this understanding. People, that's why people preach these this false and this nonsense and put people in fear because they don't know God. God has a purpose for you, and he has, he has already declared that purpose to you. Don't believe, in, believe that somebody's going to steal your star. No, no, but we're going to get into what happens. All right? There's somebody else I want us to all look at as well. Let us go to Genesis 37. And this is a popular man in the Old Testament, and his name is, Je is Joseph. All right? Familiar with the Bible? We all know Joseph's story. I'm going to read from verses 5. To 11. Genesis 37 verses 5 through 11. All right. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him more. All right. So he said to them, please hear this dream, which I have dreamed. They were there. We were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And indeed your sheaves stood all around me and bowed down to my sheaf. All right, verses eight. And his brothers said to him, shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and, and for his words. So they knew what that dream meant. They had the understanding and how and received that interpretation of what that dream meant. But it says they hated him even more. This is a lesson of wisdom. This goes to show us that we can't, we shouldn't share everything with everybody that God has shown us. We shouldn't, it's not, it's not wise. It's true, it's not wise to share anything with, with um what God has showed us, right? Reason why is we'll cause unnecessary trouble, drama, and afflictions upon ourselves, which didn't have to happen to us if we had kept our mouth shut. There's a verse in the Proverbs that says, he who guards his mouth guards his life. Or in other words, he who guards his mouth will guard his soul from troubles, all right? There's a verse in the Proverbs that speaks this. It's, it's a spiritual law. It's wisdom. So don't go around sharing everything with everybody what God has, has told you. It's not wisdom, all right? Keep certain things to yourself. You'll be better off doing that, all right? You'll save yourself from a lot of trouble, all right? All right, praise God. Um, verses nine. 
Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowed down to me. All right. There we go again. Stars. The stars of stars represent the, um, um, the sons of Jacob. All right. People. So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. I'm going to stop right there with, with Joseph, all right? The reason why I'm showing you that is this. God are, is, is showing the purpose and destiny of, jo of Jacob, Joseph in the dream, in the vision of the night. God is showing Joseph his purpose, what God has for him, all right? He has declared it, Joseph. They're gonna rule over your brother. You're gonna you're gonna rule over your brother, and they're gonna come in here and bow down to you. God has already purposed that. Now listen, as I mentioned, we can learn from this because not to share everything with everybody. Now what he did when he shared with them, what they try to do, try to get rid of him. All right, if you know his story, try to get rid of him. Right, they, and they sold him as a slave. All right, they tried to develop tactics to prevent that dream from coming to fruition, all right? Thinking that if he sold them, this and that, you know, none of that's going to happen. Well, guess what? It still happened. It still happened according, according to the plan, according to the purpose that God had for, for Joseph's life. The dream came to fruition because God has already foresaw it. He has already declared it and his word cannot return void. They couldn't rob him of that. Joseph became a prime minister over Egypt. All right? You know the story. I just wanted to show you that according to God's foreknowledge, what he declared, it came to pass. All right? It came to pass. Now, as I said before, I wanted to get into the real um, reason of what's happening to a lot of people in which they may think or feel as if their destiny is stolen or their star has been stolen. As I mentioned, enemy cannot come and steal your star. As I already explained what the star is according to the Bible, as I explained according to God's foreknowledge, he has a purpose for you and that purpose is going to be fulfilled. And this is under certain conditions. Now, this is what I want to talk about. This is what I want to tell you. The condition is as long as you are in alignment with God's will. What he has for you is going to come to fruition, all right? The devil can't steal your destiny where somebody else had it. No. This is what happens. The devil will come through his deception, through his schemes, to try and get you out of alignment with God's will, whether causing you to go astray by false teachings, deceptions, lies, li living in sin, all right? Not, not turning away from those, those habits, those behaviors, those sins that God already told you to put down to let go, but you're still engaging in them, all right? So devil cause you to go astray, all right? And now when somebody works that witchcraft, whatever, sorcery, whatever you want to call it on you now, because you have these open doors through disobedience, all right? Because you have gone astray, you have, you have um, stepped aside out of God's divine purpose for your life. You came out of alignment, right? And you have these open doors because of disobedience. Now, the devil, it's like you're caged now. You, you can't go nowhere, all right? You're caged. You can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. No doors are opening up, all right? And you're sitting here blaming the devil. Oh, the devil, rebu I rebuke you. The devil has me trapped. This that. Yeah, he has me trapped. Yeah, because of your disobedience. Your disobedience, all right? And now what he does now, right? All that witch and warlocks working their witchcraft, he now, quote unquote, blesses them, which is actually a curse. He gives them riches, them money, not because he stole it from you. No, no. Remember what the Bible says, that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, in heavenly places. All right. Devil can't just go up to heaven and, and steal that from you. No, that's up there. But the devil can bless people. But it's not really a blessing. It's a curse. He can give people riches. He can give people fame. All right? He can give people all that stuff. A lot of possessions. He can do that. 
There are a lot of people who sold themselves out to the devil and they, they received riches, possessions, fame, prestige, popularity, you name it. So that's what he does. He gets you out of alignment, right? Then he comes, puts you in a spiritual embargo, spiritual captivity. You can't even move forward, all right? Because you have sin in your life. You have open doorways in your life, all right? You're in disobedience. So he puts you in a trap right there, right? And then he goes and he, he gives um these witches their rocks, these riches, these fortunes, what they want. He gives it to them now, all right? But they're thinking that he got this from you. He didn't get it from you. That's the deception. The whole point is, is this now. You have to get back in alignment with God's will. You have to be obedient to the word of God. All right? Listen, I didn't make this stuff up. These are spiritual laws. If, if we turn to Deuteronomy chapter 28, we will see these things for ourselves. We can see these things for ourselves. Starting at verse 15, Deuteronomy 28, verse 15, these are the curses of disobedience, all right? The curses of disobedience. And let's look at, um. all right, so let's look at um verses 25. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. You shall become troublesome to all the kings of the earth, all right? You in disobedience, you're going to try and fight against these demonic forces, monitoring spirits, um, witchcraft spirits, whatever you want to name, you ain't winning. Why? Because you're in disobedience. You're going to try and challenge them, but you fleeing. You're running. Why? Because you're in disobedience. You're in disobedience. Read all through Deuteronomy 28. What else they have? They have um, bingo, verses 38. You shall carry much seed out the field, but gather in little, for the locusts shall consume it. All right? You're going to be sowing, 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 working hard, but Every time it seems like you can't even save, your money's going out your pocket. Things are showing up. Why? Because you were disobedient. You shall plant vineyards and tend them, but you should not drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat it. You're going to sow, but you're not going to reap what you sowed. Somebody else is going to sow that. <laughs> somebody, sorry, somebody else is going to reap that. You're going to leave all that stuff behind. Somebody else is going to reap it. But yeah, you did all the work. Why? Because of disobedience. These, these are curses. These, these are all curses because of disobedience. Locusts shall consume all your trees and the produce of your land. The alien who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. All right? You're going to be the tail. They're going to be the head. And you're thinking the enemy stole your star. The enemy didn't steal your star. He just got you off track. So you can be in disobedience, and now these curses come upon you. Okay? Remember the story of Balaam. Right when he tried to curse the children of Israel, he couldn't curse them. He made a statement saying, "You can't curse what God has not cursed. You can't denounce what God has not denounced." He couldn't curse them because they were blessed. All right, they were in obedience. What he did, um, he devised a plan, right, to cause them to go sleep with the Moabite women. Right, so now they sin. They committed harlotry, fornication with them. Now they sin. Now there's an open doorway, and because of that, a plague came upon the children of Israel and wiped them out. Started killing off a lot. A plague came because there was an open doorway because of sin. They came out of alignment with God's will. That's what happens, folks. So I want us to understand this, all right? Go away, cast down, reject that false teaching about enemy can come and steal your star. Anybody comes with you at teaching, reject them. Just tell them be quiet. You don't want to hear that stuff. It's falsehood. And me cannot come and steal your star. The devil cannot come and steal your star. All right. You stay in alignment with God's will for your life. You keep being obedient to the word of God. Obedience. What God is looking for. Obedience. Build a, a life of prayer and fasting and that relationship with, you, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All right. He's our refuge. No fear the devil. Fear God. Because greater is he that is in you than he that's in this world. I pray that you all take this message to heart. Definitely um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share this video around so that falsehood could be exposed, man. It's, it's, it's going around circulating on YouTube in a lot of churches. You know, Share this video so others can hear the truth because the truth is going to set you free. You all have a blessed day in Jesus' name. Amen.